We roll on here on Mountain West Men's Basketball Media Days. Our next stop is going to be San Jose, California. She's Bridget Howard. I am Jesse Kurtz, and it's time to bring in the new head coach of the San Jose State Spartans, uh, Tim Miles, who is an old friend of the Mountain West, been around the league for plenty of times, took a, a brief hiatus, and now he's back. Tim, it's, it's great to see you, my friend. It's great to have you back in the Mountain West. How's life going? It's going great. You know, it's always warm and sunny in San Jose, so there's nothing like uh, trying to get Spartan basketball up and running. We're happy to be back in, in college basketball after that hiatus, doing that easy stuff, that media. <laughs> you California guys are all the same. You throw that weather stuff in our face. I resent <laughs> that. Before we move forward, Coach, and we really talk some basketball, I, I'm a, uh, a father of two boys. I'm poor, and I've been challenged. I get $10 if you put that Spartan head on. Does it fit? Can I get my 10 bucks? I'll share it with you. Um, you're not getting your 10 because it doesn't fit. And I'm not a Spartan yet. I'm not a warrior. We, I have not, you know, I've just, I'm not there, but I tell you what, this bad boy is uh, we're, we're going to pass it around the locker room and see if we can't get that thing going. Fair enough, coach. Uh, you, you mentioned in your introductory press conference that Spartans put on helmets and run to the fight. What did you mean by that? And how have you integrated that into your program? Well, I think that's a, an evolving project in terms of our program. You know, I think as we get going, we want to be a team that's gritty, that's tough, that's tough minded. And I think that's the way you're going to have success in this league outside of the, the normal uh, carte blanche of great offense, great defense. I, I, I think that we have to break the cycle. San Jose State basketball has not been a, a huge player for a long time on the college basketball scene. So anytime you have this malaise, so to speak, you have to you have to fight your way out of it. And that's what we have to do here at San Jose State, because if we don't run to the fight, the fight's going to come to us in the forms of Colorado State, San Diego State, Nevada, Air Force, Wyoming, you name it, Boise. They're going to bring the fight to us. We have to run to the fight. We have to be willing and eager to go and engage. And I think that we're going to bring in the types of players and the types of people that will do that. We already have a group I really like. And I think is I'm excited about uh, to start our foray into the Mountain West. Uh, uh, 2.0 for Coach Miles. Well, you've done a, a tremendous job in your career in, in building programs at Southwest Minnesota, North Dakota State, Colorado State, uh, Nebraska. You've had great success in, in building programs. I'm curious, what did you see in this program? Because it has had its struggles, as you identified. What did you see in it that you could reach that again? Uh, first and foremost, we, we, foremost, we have an outstanding academic institution. We have a school we can recruit to. Uh, you know, we put a lot of people, uh, jobs into Silicon Valley uh, beyond just tech, the technological part. I mean, we, we really have an outstanding educational uh, uh, institution to recruit to. So when young people come out here, they know they're getting a fantastic degree and something where they can, they can work anywhere in the world, really. I think that's first and foremost. Next, most, I love the Mountain West Conference. Um, when I uh, left North Dakota State, we were Division One independent, and we hopped into the Mountain West. And back then, it was BYU, Utah, TCU, plus the the stalwarts of uh, San Diego State, UNLV. Steve Alford was at New Mexico back then. Uh, it it was really really uh, a charge. And when I left the Mountain West, we had had some some defections, and I think that's what's really exciting about it now is we did fight off those defections. We really did. Air Force and Colorado State, Boise, San Diego State stayed. The Mountain West can really be a top-notch league. When we were in it the first time, we were putting more teams in the NCAA tournament than the Pac-10 was year after year after year. And we can get back to that. We can really be a player in, in, West, in the Western United States in college basketball. And, and the league really excites me to be back in the Mountain West. And again, sunny California, what's not to like? You're right. What's not to like about sunny California? Well, if you have a question for Coach Miles, please make sure to raise your hand to enter the queue. Coach, we'll now go to the San Diego Union Tribune to hear from Mark Ziegler, who has a question for you. Coach, in, in the last uh, four or five years, programs that hired coaches that had previous Mountain West, uh, Mountain West experience did very well. And the programs that did not, you're, the school you're at right now, New Mexico is another example, um, uh, struggled. Um, what is it about knowledge and prior familiarity with this conference that, that allows you to have success? Mark, good to talk to you again. Uh, well, I think the, the Mountain West is, is, is a 
phenomenal league, but it's also a challenging league because, and, and now we have more of a Western Ridge uh, with Fresno, San Jose, and San Diego than we used to have. It used to be really a mountainous type of thing. And so every challenge you can imagine going into altitude um, or whatever it might be, uh, and the travel is rugged and the home courts are phenomenal. Uh, so you're going into one, for instance, if you're at San Jose and you go up into Wyoming and go to Colorado State or even New Mexico or Air Force, you're going into a great deal of altitude. And, and that's, a, that's a little bit of a challenge in itself. You know, like for instance, I'm not flying into DIA at two in the afternoon and fighting off those <laughs> winds coming off the foothills. We're not doing that, right? We're going in first thing in the morning when it's nice and smooth and easy. I, I, just little stuff like that, I think is really important uh, for the betterment of your team. But also I think you look at, uh, you know, fired Big Ten head coaches uh, 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 group that of guys that were in the Big Ten, fired or not, uh, that came out. For instance, Steve Fisher, uh, uh, was at Michigan's. Look what he did at San Diego State. Steve Alford voluntarily left Iowa. Look what he did at New Mexico. Uh, you know, and I hope I can do some of the same things. I'm sure Richard Patino feels the same thing down at New Mexico again, that we can build these programs into bona fide Mountain West winners. Thanks. Thanks, Mark. We've got another question for you from Vic Aquino from SB Nation. Hey, you Tim. Hi, Vic. Looking good, looking good there. Uh, just uh, assuming, let's say your group's done some of its assessments around the Mountain West competition, uh, how much you early on gauge, you know, the Spartan lineup competitively or matchup wise, or just a feel on that. Yeah, I, you know, I like us. We, we've been hit with some challenges uh, early. We've had uh, Michael Ofebu, uh, Majak Kuath, uh, Ed Lane, who's back, are all out with injury right now uh, and, and probably not coming back. So we're a little bit thin on numbers, uh, but at the same time, I really like, uh, especially when you look at the returners like Omari Moore, who's going to speaking, who's going to be speaking with you guys later today. Omari's got big time breakout potential. He's a tall, lean guard who can really do a little bit of everything. Uh, not only is he um, a guy that can read screen and roll and make good uh, offensive plays with assists, he scores at the rim, he makes threes. And he is a legit one of the best defenders in the Mount West. I mean, if he's not one of the top one or two guys in the Mount West, I'll be stunned. I, I think he brings a lot to the table. And, and as we go forward, uh, I, hopefully some of these guys we brought in are going to break out. Uh, you never know. Uh, Trey Anderson from uh, University of South Carolina, Ibrahima Diala is a physical force, a rim protector. Uh, you know, I, I think if we can get Richard Washington back, I think that would be a great addition for San Jose State basketball. All right, coach, we'll now go to Jeff Gramer from the Albuquerque Journal. Tim, how's it going? I, I wanted to follow up on this Big Ten Club comment. Um, is the Mountain West going to be a, a little bit of a, a Big Ten West coming up? Um, is, is there something that comes from those leagues that, that maybe we would see and identify in the Mountain West from those four coaches, a brand maybe? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a, a good thing. If you look at Steve Fisher, he brought the same brand that he had at Michigan right to San Diego State. I mean, he was long and athletic. He trapped the low post, very stingy defensively, always had a breakout go-to guard and enough size and length internally. The same things he was doing in the Big Ten, he did at San Diego State. Only instead of kids from Michigan and the upper Midwest, Ohio, whatever it might be, uh, he was doing it with kids from California. And, and I, I would imagine that when you see guys like that, and you go through the Big Ten, it's a grind, and you're challenged every way. Um, if you're weak at anything, you get exposed. There are no the, – the teams that are in 10th, 11th, and 12th place are terrific. Well-coached, a lot of talent. I mean, NBA player-type talent. And so when you go through that, I think it sharpens your saw, so to speak, and makes you a better coach and makes it allows you to be better in your preparation or your recruiting or your schematic uh, situation, whatever it might be. And then specific to, to my neck of the woods with, with Richard, obviously there's some mutual interest too um, with uh, New Mexico being interested in when there was an opening in you as well. And I know you and Richard were on the, on your podcast together last year, you guys know each other. There's some familiarity, obviously. Is that something that you would offer up any advice to him coming into this league or, or are you guys both in the same kind of starting spot this year? Like how, how do you and Richard and your relationship, it, what is your relationship and how is that relationship affected now that you guys are both starting in the, in the same league? Well, Richard and I are, are, are good friends. And we also, um, 
you know, we competed against each other in the Big Ten, and we're going to, and we competed against each other recruiting. And I would, ex, you know, ex, expect the same exact thing to happen. And it's not going to change any part of the relationship. Richard's a heck of a coach. He'd still be at Minnesota if his NBA guys just stayed a little longer. You know, I mean, you look at the amount of pros he had. Uh, they really had a, a lot of great things going at Minnesota. I would expect he's going to do the same. And no, he hasn't asked me for any advice. And, and, I, and if he does, I'll certainly give it up uh, because, I, you know, I, I view myself as a guy that has been helped by many coaches over the course of 25 years of head coaching. I certainly want to do the same to anybody that asks that way, too. And you look at things. I think the Lobos are going to be back. I think, you know, you look at what Steve and Craig Neal have built together and then carried on. And then, you know, there was a retraction and, and uh, that happens to anybody. But I think Richard's going to get uh, the pit up and rocking again in no time. A little bit of a softball here, but can San Jose State be a Mountain West competitor? I mean, you're in a position where I know what the answer is going to be. But do you, you believe that this is a program that can compete in this league? I do. Yeah, we, we have some challenges ahead of us internally. Like if we, we do the things that we're, we've talked about in the interview process or talked about in the hiring process, uh, we will be just fine. Uh, once we get our infrastructure in place, and in the meantime, I still think we can be a player. We have fertile talent recruiting ground. We can, we can recruit anywhere. And, and you look at the Mount West has always been an attractive um, conference for high major players. Uh, we have guys that left Ole Miss, Ohio State, South Carolina, right? I'm going to forget, guys. I mean, I mean, uh, you know, we, we, we've had guys from every major league uh, out there uh, want to come to the Mountain West. That's going to continue, whether it be San Jose State, New Mexico, San Diego State, you name it, Boise, whatever it might be. We, we are an attractive league, and San Jose State can be a feature player. There's no doubt we can build a lasting winner in Northern California. Northern California. We have a great media market. I mean, one of the largest media markets in, in the country. We have great uh, recruiting talent in the area, and we are putting the infrastructure in place, whether it be facilities, hiring staff, whatever that might be, you know, just, you know, fill in the blank. And I could go on all day on what a coach wants, you know, uh, for uh, his program, and we're getting those things in place right now. So I'm excited about where we're at. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, Jeff. Another, another question for you, Coach, from Eli Betger from Heat Check College Basketball. Eli? Heat Check. Hi, hi Coach. Uh, I guess this is somewhat of a two-parter question. My first one with just assuming the position at San Jose State, I, I guess what stands out to you in terms of what you would like to build within the program and how you go about kind of igniting that sort of culture change? And then the second question, which kind of goes back to uh, Jeff's question and what you said there about your transfers. Do you have a particular lean, whether you want to approach the transfer market more, or do you find yourself maybe more sticking into the California market in terms of acquiring talent? Hey, we're Statue of Liberty recruiting, Eli. Give us your, <laughs> anybody, I don't, I don't care if you're international, if you're a transfer, high school, junior college, we're going to take everybody and we're going to welcome you with open arms. When you look at that, I think uh, that being said, there are some real advantages to being in California, major population center uh, out in the West here, very attractive climate, like we've talked about, a, very, uh, a lot of things going uh, for the Mount West. In the first part of your question, uh, you know, I, I think when you look at what we're trying to put in place to build a winner, you know, you start with um, the energy of a coaching staff, and hopefully that bleeds into the team. And there's a togetherness there that, and a synergy that people recognize and identify with. Everybody wants to watch uh, a team playing well. Everybody wants to watch exciting stuff. Everybody wants to watch exciting players. And I think we have a whole bunch of that. And again, I go back to a guy like uh, that we're featuring today, Omari Moore. I, he is a, he's a big time player. He's got a chance for pro potential. He's a guy people are going to kind of want to uh, watch. But we have to do a job. We have to connect with our students, our fraternity sororities, our local community in San Jose and Northern Cal. Uh, if we can do that, uh, I think the event center will be a really uh, exciting place for college basketball. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, Eli. Coach, when you look at the roster that you've put together this season, and especially with the transfers, who specifically out of the transfers has really just impressed you during this offseason and preseason? 
I think the three guys are the three biggest guys that you look at that, that have a chance for um, making an impact. And Ibrahim, Ibrahim Diallo is a physical force. I mean, he's what, seven, six wingspan, seven feet tall, uh, a pretty good athlete. Um, still learning the, the the game of basketball. You know, he still has a lot of developmental work to do uh, for um, for consistent offensive threat. But he's just hard to go against. Like you talk to our guy, and he's a physical force. Trey Anderson from South Carolina is a big time worker. He's a guy that that uh, uh, I, I mean brings edge every day. Exactly what you think you're going to get out of a guy that played for Frank Martin at University of South Carolina. Uh, you look at Tibet Garner, who uh, transferred from Arizona, big time shooter, sweet outside stroke, uh, sneaky good athlete, by the way. I, I really like where he's going. And then, of course, Sean Robinson is a young guy that from Ole Miss that really couldn't crack the floor there, had some injuries. If he can find a consistent way to get on the floor, stay healthy and do the things he needs to do, he could really be a guy that 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 bursts onto the scene, uh, the scene. But we'll just see how all that goes as we put this in front of our guys. We haven't even faced competition yet. So, so many things change. And in college basketball, who you think you are in October, November, oftentimes isn't who you are in, in December, January, and February. That's where a team has to learn how to win. A team has to learn how to, has to figure out what works for them against the competition they're going. And when you're a fledgling, like, take, like we are, we took the job in April, that's a fledgling. We're just growing into what we're going to be. Uh, I think it's a, uh, it's, it's even more important that these first few weeks are just rooted in the basics of who we are. And we want to be Spartans that run to the fight. We want to be a team that takes the fight to our opponent. We want to be a team that controls and dictates what's going on in the game. Well, last question for you, Coach. We'll go to Vic Aquino from SB Nation. Vic? Hey, Tim. I appreciate the transparency. Uh, as you know, I've had a chance to watch the team a bit. And uh, like you, you mentioned, the mantra of running to the fight and it, it definitely feels and looks like day and night difference. And, and I do see the energy and the looseness and everything, but how would you describe to the fans, the alumni and everybody, like what, what's, what do you anticipate this personality of this team yeah. or style this team could be or should be? Well, Vic, you wrote about it. I want a team that has a good vibe, a good energy together, a good synergy together. And, and Coach Prelo and his staff did a great job, left some extremely good talent. I don't know how anybody in college basketball could go through what they had to go through last year in terms of the way they had to um, self-isolate and quarantine themselves and just, you know, travel around. I, it just really, truly, um, it, as a fan, I don't know if fans can truly appreciate what college basketball players and coaches went through last year to get that season up and running and everybody behind the scenes too. It's amazing uh, what, what transpired, but I think what you should see with Tim Miles uh, is a team that that plays with inspiration, that plays with a great vibe, that enjoys being together, and it's going to look you square in the eye and is not afraid. We won't blink. We won't flinch. We're just going to compete our butts off every single night. Awesome. Thank you, Vic. Uh, Coach, before we let you go, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask uh, about your coaching tree. And all great coaches develop great coaches, and we've seen some of the coaches who have coached under you reach great success. Nico at Colorado State, preseason number one. Craig Smith won multiple championships in the Mountain West before leaving. Um, how proud are you to see guys that, that you help bring up through the business now um, having the su uh, success on their own leading programs? Hey, you know, it's, it's awesome you ask that because I think immediately you see the only stiff in the group is me. I mean, these guys are really, really good coaches. And, and what Nico's got going at Colorado State, what Craig did at Utah State were phenomenal. I will tell you, as good a coach as they are, they're better people. They're so much fun to be around. We still keep in touch all the time. I'm very proud of our coaching tree. Even if you look back, Brad Bigler, who is my point guard at Southwest Minnesota State, I took that program over in 1997. I handed it off to Greg Steeman, who was my assistant, and then he handed it off to Brad Bigler, who was our point guard. That's been in our family since 1997. I don't know how many years that is, but it feels like 24. All right. Uh, you look at then uh, what's going on in North Dakota State. We handed it over to Saul Phillips. And when he left for Ohio, Dave Richmond was on our staff for four years. He's now the head coach. That's been in our family since 2001, 20 years of the same program. Now to see Colorado State back in the good hands of Nico Medved. I think that really means a lot to me to see those programs continue on what we go in and try and entrench ourselves to build, to dig into a community, to get people to rally around us and to build 
really winning strong basketball teams. Those guys have done it. There's dozens of other guys out there I haven't even brought up that were managers, that were, were guys that worked us as assistant coaches that are Division II, NAI, of course, Division I coaches. It's a lot of fun to see people go through that and do it. And, and those two guys, I, I think, um, really made their mark on the Mountain West. I think they're the, they're the last two recipients of the Mountain West Coach of the Year. And so um, I just want to be the newcomer of the year. And, and if we can pull that off, we'll be in good shape. Well, you're a 10 out of 10, my friend, and it is great to have you back in the league. Thank you so much for taking the time for us, and uh, good luck running to the fight. We look forward to seeing you down the road. Thanks very much. Go Spartans. You bet. That's Tim Miles, the head coach of the San Jose State Spartans. You can just see the energy from Coach Miles and the excitement he has about being back in the Mountain West. And, you know, a team that went 5-16 and 16 last year, 3-13 and 13 in the Mountain West, you heard him there say, this is going to be a team this year that's going to look you in the eyes, not back down. They're going to run to the fight. Well, and his track record speaks for itself. He's taking over a program that, that uh, is ready to rebuild. He did it at Southwest Minnesota, did it at North Dakota State, Colorado State, and Nebraska. I'm not betting against the guy in San Jose. Let's head back to uh, San Jose State and bring in the, uh, the Spartan Omari Moore. Omari, I appreciate you making some time for us. Uh, let's talk Definitely. about this year's program. I mean, there's a lot of energy out of Coach Miles. Has that trickled down? Oh, of course. We're all um, really excited to get the season going. We have a lot of new guys in, some guys returning, and it's, all, it's a lot of excitement around the program right now. A lot of excitement in the locker room, a lot of excitement on campus, so we're ready to get it going. This is just a reminder that if you have a question for Amari to please make sure to raise your hand to enter the queue. Now, this team has eight newcomers, including five power five transfers, and it's a new team with a new coach. What has it been like building that team chemistry this offseason? What are the, some of the things that y'all have done to make sure that that team chemistry is there when you step out onto the court? Yeah, so coming together with a new team has definitely been a little bit different. But um, all summer, we were living together in the dorms, and we really gelled a lot faster than I thought we would. We spent a lot of time together on the court, but then off the court, we're always together, hanging out, laughing, in the locker room, laughing, playing video games. So it's been, it's been fairly easy, actually, coming together as a team. Well, we've got a question for you, and we will now head to Jeff Grammer from the Albuquerque Journal. Hey, Omari, do you guys ever just get worn out with uh, with Coach Miles just going a mile a minute with all that energy? At, at practice and, and <laughs> no, we love sessions? the energy. We love the energy. Um, if his if his energy is low, our energy is low. So when he's high, we're all high. Do you, I imagine in like you go have a meeting with him in his office. I mean, is it just like he was with us? Where yeah, he's just it's, going? It's on 10 all the time. Always, always smiling, always good mood, always ready to bring everybody else around him up. Awesome. Um, look, you, you've been in this league a couple of years now, so you you know what the league's about. What what are we as media and what are fans around this league going to see that's different? What's the what's the big stamp on this program right now that you think we're going to see on the court that we would notice is something different than it was maybe the last few years? Yeah, I think um, with this year's team, we're just going to be the hardest hardest playing team out there. I think right now that's what we need to do if we want to win games. You got to outwork people. We got to win games, like Coach Miles said look teams in the eye and them know that we're not afraid to go against anybody in this league. So just playing really hard, playing together, um, a lot of energy, a lot, a lot of energy from this year's team. It, it, let me ask one more quick one. The, if there's one stat, maybe personally, or maybe as a team that, that we look at, and, and if you guys have a successful season, it's because of this one stat on the stat sheet. Like, is there one stat you guys want to really focus on? I think one stat that me personally, I think if we do this, we'll win is just defensive stops, um, limiting other teams. I think last year we gave up a lot of offensive rebounds. I think this year, if we limit teams to one shot and um, just getting rebounds, I think we'll be okay. Awesome, thanks, man. Amari, coach, when, when we asked him about you, he talked about how you could potentially be a big time breakout star this year. What are some of the steps you've taken this off season to really make that be a true statement this year? Yeah, so I've, I've been putting in a lot of work this offseason in different categories like shooting and um, just working on my reads off of screens and stuff like that. But I think a lot of it for me has been more mentally like working on becoming a better leader for the team. I think that um, just making sure I can keep my confidence at a high. I think all that stuff is really important for me personally, meeting with the different assistant coaches, head coaches, them just talking me through different things, watching film with me, breaking it down, just becoming a better student overall. 
Well, we talked about the transfers a little bit earlier. Who are some of the transfers that have really stepped stepped up and and stood out in your eyes this offseason? Yeah, I mean, I can go down the line. We have um, Tibet from Arizona. He's a really, really good shooter. He's been playing well. Ibrahim Diallo from Ohio State. As coach said, he's he's really big. He's a big body in the paint. He um, enforces his will. Sean Robinson from Ole Miss. He can shoot the ball, stretch the floor, finish in the paint. Trey Anderson from South Carolina. He's also he's a really good leader for us. He finishes in the paint, talks to everybody, kind of brings the team together. Uh, Amari, if we uh, or we do have uh, a few more minutes here, and if you have a question in our gathered media, go ahead and raise your hand. Uh, we'll get you in queue. Uh, being a part of a, a a transition, you being with coach with coaching staff A, and then transitioning to coaching staff B. Um, it's a little bit different than someone who comes in with that incoming coach. How has that transition been for you? Has it been a challenge? Has it been a breath of fresh air? How has it made you better? I think Coach Miles and the rest of the coaching staff have done a really good job in allowing me to be comfortable in the transition. They've um, all been all been really good to me, all been talking me through everything, making it comfortable for me, easy for me. Just talking me through everything has been really good. Well, Amari, we are excited to see the Spartans get back out on the court this season, especially under the supervision of new head coach Tim Miles. So we appreciate you taking the time to join us today and good luck this season. Thank you for having me.